Hi, uh, I am Andrew Choi, uh, software engineering, um, software engineering at companies like uh, Microsoft, LinkedIn, Snapchat, IBM. Um, I will be your instructor for this course, um, software engineering uh, interview prep. If you're targeting a software engineering role at top tech companies, um, I would highly recommend you attend this course. This course is absolutely for free. We will cover everything from um, software engineering to technical interview questions to go to market strategy. During this course, uh, I will cover important topics, the most asked interview questions and uh, efficient ways uh, to solve them. I have more than seven years of experience in software engineering role at top tech companies in the United States, and I've helped a lot of candidates with interview preparation. I am very excited to help you land your dream role. So sign up for my course and I look forward to uh, uh, meeting you. Okay, so let me give you a quick uh, overview of High Counselor. So High Counselor uh, is an online career accelerator. And um, we help you, uh, you know, we help job seekers to find a full-time job. High Counselor helps candidates with interview prep as well as getting the uh, interview calls. So we utilize AI powered job search tools and strong network of 300 plus employers to help candidates land a job. So every, every candidate gets personal attention and mentorship from a professional like myself who come from top tech companies. The payment structure at High Counselor is income share agreement where you don't pay anything to the High Counselor until you land a job. So once you land a job, uh, you pay a fraction of your first year salary in months installments. So there's zero dollars upfront payment. If you're currently looking for a job, High Counselor could be a great resource for you. The next court at High Counselor starts very soon. So if you're interested, please apply on highcounselor.com. Feel free to use my code, Andrew, and you will get a $500 discount when you start paying High Counselor after landing a job. So in this course, on in this session, we're going to cover trees, uh, one of the most important topics for uh, both pro uh, both programming and software engineering, but also one of the most uh, frequently asked questions in um, coding interviews in real world. So let's so let's let's understand uh, trees in data structure, and you make sure you write this down on a pen and paper. Um, that that's the uh, that's the most optimal way, and that's the best way to uh, really absorb the information rather than just just sitting and watching. So, so general tree uh, is a tree in which there's no restriction on the number of children that a node has. That's called general tree. Example. Examples are the family tree folder structure. Uh, whereas a binary tree, every node have a, at most two children, left and right. In this diagram, uh, B and D are children, and C and E and F are um, are, are the uh, sorry, yeah. In the diagram, uh, B and D uh, are left children, and C and E and F are right children. But the binary trees are further divided into many types based on its application. Uh, the full binary tree is if every node in the tree has zero or two children, the tree is called a full tree. The tree in, in, this, in this diagram is not a full binary tree because node C has only the right child. Perfect binary tree is a binary tree in which all interior nodes have two children and all leaves have the same depth or same level. So, in, in the perfect fold binary tree, the, uh, the L is equal to 2H, and N is equal to 2 to the power of H plus 1 minus 1, where N is the number of nodes, H is height of tree, and L is the number of leaf nodes.
So in the diagram, H is two height. Uh, so leaves will be four and the nodes will be two to the power three minus one, which is seven. So balance tree, uh, if the node of the left and right subtree at any node differs at most by one, then the tree is called a balance tree. So binary search tree is, so it's a binary tree with a binary search property. Uh, binary search property states that this value or the key of the left node is less than the, less than its parent and the, and the value or the key of the right node is greater than, than its parent. And this is true for all nodes. So binary search tree trees are used in, in many searching and sorting algorithms. And there are many variants of binary search trees like AVL trees, uh, B tree, red black tree, and et cetera. Okay. So a tree structure is used in you know, predictive modeling as well. Uh, it's usually called a decision tree. And in decision tree, each internal node represents a test or condition uh, on a predictive variable and the edge gives various possible answers to this, uh, to this test. The leaf node gives the outcome of all tests on a path. The decision tree for accepting or rejecting job offer, for example, looks as follows. So deciding whether to accept or reject a job is based on two parameters here salary and commute time. The notes um, specify conditions on which these two parameters are tested. So the priority of condition depends on how close it, it is to the root. The most affecting parameter is tested first. In this case, salary. So that is the first split at the root, then the next relevant condition, hence, uh, decision trees not only help in finding decisions, but it also does in the fastest way. There are many algorithms like you know classification and regression tree, uh, random forest, which helps uh, building models. So the tree is a you know hierarchical and non-parametric data structure. Um, So it's, it's, so it's simple to understand due to its visual representation. Uh, it can work on both classification and continuous data. Uh, it's used in data science to build predictive models because they can handle large amounts of data and they can be validated uh, statistically.
Okay, so let's try some, let's try to tackle some problems. So let's start with a very uh, um, introductory uh, problem question. So let's try this. So you're given a root of the binary tree. So you want to find the inner order traversal of its node values. So for example, if you're given this, uh, where the input is equal to root uh, is, uh, is equal to one, um, null, two, and three, the output is going to be one, two, three. Let's say you're given this, where the input is going to be root equal to one, two, then the output is going to be two and one. Okay. So your goal is to return the in order traversal of its node values. So I'll, uh, so um, I want you to write this in, you know, whatever programming language, um, try it out for a couple minutes, and then we'll solve it. Yeah, so let's try to tackle this problem. There's a couple ways to solve it. And then we're gonna take the most um, legible, uh, simple and intuitive iterator solution using uh, stack and tree node.
Okay, so we can see that we initialized, uh, we, we instantiated a, a variable called a, a list, which is an array list of integer. And then we declared a, a stack, which is a stack of tree nodes. And then we set a node called current to the root. And then we said that while the current node has something and stack also contains something, we're going to um, run logic inside it. So the logic inside says, uh, while uh, the current node, while the current node uh, contains something, then we're going to keep adding to the stack the current node and set the current to the left, right? Because we're doing, we're doing in order traversal. We're going from um, the root, uh, keep adding the current, and then setting the current to the left as long as current contains something. So once that's done, um, we pop the stack. We pop the stack, so, so remove the uh, top of the stack, um, say that's the current, and then to the list, we add the current value and say that the current is equal to the current dot right. Um, so now, um, because we solved all the left side, now we're now on to the next, which is the right uh, for as the current value. So we run that for as long as the current node has something not null and stack is not empty, meaning stack contains something. Okay, so let's try, let's try another problem. So in this problem, Your goal is to uh, find whether a tree, a binary tree, is asymmetrical or symmetrical. So whether to find it's a mirror of itself, um, that's the goal. Uh, if it's symmetric around its center. So let's give you an example. So you know that this is going to be true because the input is one, two, two, three, four, four, three, and then it's perfectly symmetrical. So the output is going to be true. So I'm going to give you also a one or two minutes. Try it out.
Okay, so for this problem, whether we check uh, binary tree as a mirror of itself, um, there's a couple ways. Number one is using a non-recursive version using a stack. Um, that usually takes a little bit longer time in terms of complexity. And it, it's also gonna turn out you know, longer code, but it's totally doable. Uh, so you just set stack of tree nodes, and then you also run a while loop uh, as long as the stack has contained something. However, in this solution, um, the more uh, simplified and more uh, optimal ways to solve this is the non-iterative uh, uh, recursive method. So essentially, you would declare a helper, a helper function, and then you utilize that in a recursive way to find whether the uh, left and right is the mirror of, it, of themselves. So let's look at what we did. We we made a um, uh, you know main method, uh, well the original method called is symmetric that takes the root as a true node, and then we're returning um, the boolean value of two or um, cases. Uh, one is if uh, we return that the um, uh, two conditions. If if the root is null, meaning the root doesn't contain anything, then we know it's symmetric by definition. Or if or if it, if the root contains something, then we're going to use the helper method to recursively find whether the values of these uh, tree nodes uh, are symmetric. That's why we pass into the helper the root dot left and root dot right. Now, once we're in the helper method, which takes the root dot left, uh, left and right value, uh, the first condition, if condition we're going to run is whether the left is uh, whether the left is null and the or or the right is null. If either of them is null, uh, we're going to check if uh, left is equal to the right. So, for example, if the right left is null. And, or the right is null, then we then we say it's symmetric if the left value and right value is equal. Okay, it, so if that's not the case, we write we go to the next if uh, if condition, which is say if the uh, left value is not equal to the right value, then we know uh, it's automatic false, right? Okay, so we check for these two conditions, whether uh, left or, or right is null, and the left values and right value right value are not equal. So we still have to find um, the the uh, symmetric characteristic of all the uh, child nodes, right? So we're gonna call the helper method for the uh, left, uh, for the left, uh, left, and the right, right. So it's essentially you have 
the root. And then we're going to check the symmetric uh, nature for left, left, right, right. And then we're going to also, we're also going to do um, a symmetric check for, here's the root, left dot right, and then right dot left. So essentially, uh, you're checking uh, the outermost nodes as well as the innermost nodes. And you keep running that until uh, we meet some base uh, condition which is if left is null or right is null. And then if, if left is equal to right, then we return true. So next question is, you're provided with an integer array numbers where the elements are sorted in ascending order. So I want you to convert it to a height balance binary search tree. So what's the height, bi bi uh, what's the height balance binary search uh, binary tree? Uh, it's a binary tree in which the depth of two subtrees of every node never differs by more than one. So for example, in this example, uh, the input is numbers uh, a negative 10, negative three, zero, five, nine. The output is going to be zero, negative three, nine, negative 10, null, and five. So why is the output zero, negative three, nine, negative 10, null, and five? Well, the explanation for this is zero. What's also possible is zero, negative 10, five, null, negative three, null, nine is also accepted. So, so here, the elements are given in the ascending order in the original tree, and we convert it to a height balance search tree, which is a binary tree in which the depth of the subtrees, depth of the sub subtrees of every node never differs by one. Okay, so I'll give you um, one or two minutes and try it out.
So you might have noticed that in uh, tree, uh, binary tree problems, the recursion uh, methodology comes in very handy. So again, we're going to use a recursive uh, Java solution. Um, so let's let's you know as always let's declare the helper method, and then we're going to declare the uh, original method for uh, finding the sorted array to BST. So here, in, in the convert to BST method, uh, we take in the numbers, which is array of integers, and we do a base check, uh, return null if the, the length of the numbers is zero, right? Uh, so if that's not the case, uh, we call the helper method, um, which will return uh, the BST in, in, in tree node. So in the helper method, we take in numbers, which is array of integers, uh, integer called low, integer called high. So if the high is less than low or low is hard, larger than high, then we know that it's done. So we, so we just return null. Uh, if that's not the case, then middle, we're gonna set the middle, which is you know the in the middle between low and high, right? So the tree node, we're gonna set, set a node called uh, node, which is, the numbers uh, are right at the middle. So we're going to return the middle value and, and call and make the tree node out of that. So the num so the, that tree node's left, and we're going to populate the, that the tree node's right using the same helper method recursively. So on the left side, uh, we know we got to put in the numbers and then the low to the left end of the middle, and on the right side of the tree node, we know we have to put in uh, the right end of the middle to the high. And then we keep doing that uh, recursively. And then as soon as we find uh, a low value being higher than high value, then we just return null. And then that, uh, uh, that sub call will end and the other uh, calls will continue to populate the trees in such a way that um, we form uh, a binary search tree. Okay, let's try 
Let's try one more problem. So given integer n, our goal uh, is to find uh, the number of structurally structurally unique uh, BSTs, uh, which has exactly n nodes of unique values from one to n. So this is a little bit more tricky question. Um, so, so we have to find the number of structurally unique binary search trees that has exactly n nodes of unique values from one to n. So example, let's say we have this, right? The input is gonna be, let's say, let's say we throw an input three, then we have to do one, two, three, because it ranges from one to n. The output is gonna be five, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, because that's the, we have five ways of structurally unique BSDs, which has exactly three nodes of unique values from one to n. So I'll give you one or two minutes. Okay, so let's try to solve this. So here, uh, we're gonna, so here we're gonna do uh, our recursion again. You, you see the pattern with, um, uh, binary search tree questions, uh, we, we utilize uh, recursive methodology a lot. So the way we're gonna tackle is to um, use every number i as a root node 
then the left branch will be what's less than i, and the right branch will be what's larger than i. So the total number of distinct structure is their product. So uh, we just sum up, we just add up the product for all numbers, and, and we use a map to uh, memorize the visited number. Okay, so here we check the memory um, in the very base case, in the first very first base case. So if the map contains that n, right, the uh, the uh, the number, then we just return um, the value corresponding to that key of n, and then after that we just keep running recursion for all the x up to n, so one, two, three, four, five, let's say one, two, three, four, five. So we run uh, summation for all the, uh, for all the uh, subtrace using recursion on the same method that we're in. Um, so the summation is gonna be a summation plus the helper result of uh, x minus one or i minus one uh, times the total number of nodes minus x. So we're gonna uh, divide the uh, recursion into two. One is from, uh, one is for i minus one, and the other one is uh, n minus i or x. Uh, x, is, x and i is basically the same thing here. Um, so one is from x, minus one and then the other is total which is n minus x so it's going to be the right side right and then we're going to put into the map the number n and the summation uh, in the end we just return the summation um, as the result of the uh, helper so essentially the idea was to leverage each number x as root node. And then the left branch will be what's less than x. 
and then the right branch will be what's larger than x. So the total number of distinct structure is their product, right? The total number of distinct structure is their product. So we just sum up uh, the product for all numbers, and we leverage a map to memorize uh, the numbers that are the, the number that is visited. Okay, so I, I want to thank you for uh, participating. Um, the, the next cohort um, at High Counselor, it starts very soon. So if you're interested and if you find a lot of value from this lesson, uh, uh, please apply on highcounselor.com and you can use my code Andrew, Andrew for free, A-N-D-R-E-W at highcounselor.com for free. And you're gonna get a five, you're gonna get a $500 discount when you start paying High Counselor. Uh, after landing uh, your job. So uh, you don't have to pay anything up front. Uh, the payment structure at High Counselor is uh, ISA, which is Income Share Agreement, uh, where you don't pay anything to High Counselor until you find a job. So uh, the next cohort at High Counselor starts very soon. So if you're interested and if you find a lot of values, um, please apply on High Counselor using the referral code Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W. -E um, I do tech interview uh, sessions, coaching session, group lessons uh, for companies like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Stripe, Facebook, which I have all interviewed for and got an offer from. So I'm gonna you know, share all the secrets and all uh, my experience with those existing companies um, through High Counselor. So make sure you use the referral code Andrew. Um, I'm gonna also share with you uh, in, that, in those sessions, how I, uh, how I personally approached um, the recruiters at these companies with almost like 95% turnover rate uh, uh, and get, get, get a uh, reply uh, for every call or email or message I sent. Uh, there's a, a strategic and tactical base. Uh, you have to structure your messages and uh, how you uh, reach out to them is very important uh, so that you get, your, you get the attention out of hundreds and thousands of applicants uh, for those positions at these top tech companies and these, and these fan companies. So I'm going to share with you a technical way and strategic way uh, on how to um, land both internships and full-time positions at companies like these, um, like companies like Apple. So um, I've been there, I've, I've gone through all those pipelines. So um, I will share with you all the strategic ways. So, all right, I'll see you guys in the next session.